And hello, everyone. Welcome to uh, the debut broadcast of Red Modeling Paint Studios and our live video, my live, live video feed. Really excited to be here tonight, and excited for you guys to be joining in and watching as well. I, uh, before we get started on painting some stuff here, kind of want to talk a little bit about how this is going to play out for the next little while. Probably will be on air tonight for only about 30 or 40 minutes, just trying to test some stuff out and figure out some of the bugs of how this is all going to work. Um, what I want to do is uh, kind of demonstrate a little bit of what these sessions and uh, streaming video service is going to be about, kind of what I think about it and how I feel about it. For those of you watching, feel free to jump on in in the chat room and say hi or post a question or two or whatever it is you want to do. I'll be uh, checking those periodically and responding to those as, as I go through this. But really, you know, this is just the, this is just about having some fun and teaching people to paint and having a good time. So uh, for those of you who are watching though, if you do notice any audio problems or anything, make sure to let me know through chat. All my tests said that everything should be sounding okay, um, but just want to make sure. The other thing is uh, video-wise, right now I'm streaming uh, at 1080 and recording at 1080. Um, but if that ends up having too high of a dropped frame rate, um, then I may have to kick that down to 720 for the stream. I will still be recording in 1080, though, and that will go up on YouTube once these videos are ready to go. But, um, you know, the stream may have to go down to 720, just depending on how it goes. So right now, I'm running at 1080. Everything looks good. And uh, there doesn't seem to really be any issues. So hopefully it stays that way. Um, I guess where I kind of want to start with a little bit tonight is uh, talking a little bit about what all this, this venture is about and what, uh, what it is I'm hoping to achieve with, uh, with these videos. Hey, how's it going, Eric? Good to see you, man. Glad to see you too in here. Wave right back at you. Um, the idea for this came when a friend of mine on my Facebook page posted that I should be filming myself when I'm painting and putting it on YouTube. And the idea kind of, as I thought about it, spread from there. And I've always enjoyed teaching. I've always enjoyed taking the time to show people how to paint and, and that sort of thing. And um, I got to thinking, well, why can't I just set up some kind of service that I can teach people how to paint but still be here in my home, um, not have to travel like uh, you know some of those other people out there who offer uh, painting classes and stuff do. Um, and just still make it a, an enjoyable, personalized experience. And so I got to thinking about what this buddy of mine was talking about. And I, you know, of course, I, I know Jay and Trevor, those guys from Chain Attack. And I thought, well, you know, they stream some of their podcasts and they stream the, the games from the, from the shop. Why couldn't I do that with, uh, with painting? And um, I looked into it more and more and more and it all just kind of, started coming together and this idea of uh, offering a customized tutorial videos kind of came about. And so what I'm hoping to do here is just that, have a customized experience for people who want to learn how to paint. Um, you know, I'm not, I'm not the best painter out there. There's some, there's some really good guys out there that, that paint to a much better quality than I do. Um, but I think I have a unique style. I think I've got um, you know, people who are interested in, in the work that I do. And, um, and that's enough. You know, I think that's enough. I think that's enough to, to make things happen and uh, provide something that people are going to be interested in. And so uh, the way this process works is, um, well, before I get, I, actually, before I get into the process, I probably should talk a little bit about what I'm doing right now. This is, um, this is a miniature I'm painting up for Menoth John. He uh, had some cricks for sale a little while back, um, the, box, the box set to be specific, and I wanted to uh, pick it up from him. So I asked him what he wanted for it. He said, paint me a miniature and it's yours, and so this is what I'm working on for him. 
and uh, he's turning out pretty good. I kind of liked the uh, uh, liked how it's gone so far. You know, I uh, went with a nice pinky pig colored flesh for him. Of course, uh, putting in the red in there for you know, the Doom Reavers of where where all this comes from. The sword is kind of a unique uh, a unique thing. I wanted something kind of obsidian like, glowing like, and that's what I went with there on that. So tonight, for at least a little bit of the show here, uh, I'm going to be working on this, trying to finish it up. It's mostly done. Uh, skin tones are all done. Tattoos are done. Uh, armor is done. The red shading is done. I need to go in and clean up some of the metal bits. Still do the tusks, the face, uh, some cloth work up in here. But for the most part, he's uh, he's sitting at about 90% done. And I've certainly been sitting on this long enough that uh, I need to give it back to John. So so hopefully I'll I'll be finishing this up tonight at least uh, at least mostly. So um, so the idea is that uh, you know. Painting and talking at the same time is kind of the skill that I'm working on here. And, and this is all virgin territory for me, guys. So, uh, you know, if uh, I repeat myself or if I kind of nod off for a second, uh, being quiet, just bear with me. Um, so this is uh, so the pig. So that's what I'm working on right now, Maximus. So back to what I was saying, though, of how this process works and, and uh, what these videos are going to be about is um, really taking the opportunity to take a miniature from someone's personal army, paint a scheme up for them that, uh, or paint it for them in the scheme that they want and use this video service, this streaming service as a means to teach them how to do that. So that's really what we're, what I'm doing here with this and, uh, and what I'm trying to make work with that. So, um, looks like a captain inevitable posted up a question in the chat room about the cork bases I'm using here. Um, what do you attach the base to the cork with when you're painting? Uh, these corks I pick up from the hardware store. Um, I've had to pick up some of the bigger ones, like uh, on my troll here, on Trevor's troll. Get it in the camera better. That's a big two-inch cork. Um, this one I had. I picked up a few of these on eBay. As far as what I attach them with, and this will be something I'll do in a future video most likely because I don't have any right now I need to attach. But this is a 3M double-sided tape. It's the kind that is a little thicker, kind of has a foam to it. Okay, what I'll do is I'll pull a piece of this off, put it on the cork, cut it off with my X-Acto knife, peel the uh, sticky piece here off, and then just jam the base onto there. It actually holds really well. Um, sometimes I've noticed if a miniature sits on the cork for too long, it actually is a little hard to remove. But um, for the most part, there, there never is really a problem with it. It, it usually uh, comes right off. It's pretty easy. So what I'm working on right now with Maximus is uh, I'm just getting these hooves cleaned up. This is going to be the next thing that I'm going to work on. Um, painted those hooves, painted the nails here. Probably paint the fing fingernails on his hand. Get these going here. You know, the real big difference between uh, what I'm doing here and, and what, say, uh, you know, Menoth John does on his show, you know, painting with Menoth John. John uh, is a great entertainer, he's a great personality, great guy. And, uh, I think his show is probably 90% entertainment, 10% painting. And I think I'm shooting for an opposite ratio here. 90% painting, 10% uh, entertainment. Uh, I don't play War Machine nearly as competitive as many of my friends do. But uh, I still know a little bit about the game. I certainly enjoy it. And I, I get my my kicks out of it when I'm playing it in the shop with the, with the guys down here. It's a good group of guys that we have the game with down here and I really like them. Color that I'm using on the hooves is Umbral Umber, P3 Umbral Umber. And uh, I keep a wet palette off the camera here that I'm mixing it in. And I'm just, you know, adding a couple of two or three thin coats to it. Nothing too crazy. What I'm going to do next for the shade is I'm going to take a little bit of P3 
uh, coal black and uh, mix that in with the umbral umber that I already have on my wet palette. Make a little bit of a shade color. Give a little bit of texture to the to the hooves so they don't look just so flat and brown. I'm mixing it at about 50-50. You know, I've got the two colors on my wet palette and uh, just kind of dipping the brush into each of them individually and then mixing it up on my plate there. It's a fairly, as you can see on my thumb there, it's a fairly dark color. I want this color to be fairly thin though and I want my, dr my brush to be fairly dry. I don't want too much paint on there so that I can I can control it better. And then what I'm going to do, if you look really closely on the hooves here, let me see if I can zoom in just a little more to show you guys. There we go. Hopefully that shows up okay. If you look in on the uh, on the hooves, there is a little bit of texture to them. So what I'm going to do is just add a little bit of a little bit of striping to it. And just kind of being random with it, nothing specific. Um, definitely going to get a little bit more right inside the hoof here just to add to that shadow and then come around on the other side here and again just add some some streaking don't need to worry too much about brush control on this this is just going to add some variety and depth to it once it's uh, once you got the final product done also come up here just add a little bit of shading on these little toenails, hangnails, whatever you want to call them, sitting here on Maximus's foot. That's about it for the shading on those hooves. Next thing I want to do is uh, work a little bit of a uh, highlight into there. I'm probably going to take a little rucksack tan and uh, mix it with that umber umber just to give me a little bit of a highlight color. Yeah, Captain Inevitable, I wouldn't recommend using uh, uh, super glue on the cork. It, uh, it's just going to make a mess when you're done. Um, yeah, stick with the double-sided tape. I've also used Silly Putty in the past for that, um, Blue Tack, and that's about it. So, All right, so uh, we're going to work some highlights now on this hoofs. Again, um, a little bit of Umbra Umber. A little bit of rucksack tan, probably closer to a two to three mix on this one. Two to three, two parts rucksack tan, one part uh, umbral umber. Again, you're going to want your brush fairly dry for this. Uh, and by dry, I still mean wet. I'm just talking not very loaded. Um, you can see how loaded my brush is there, not very loaded. Um, someone asked too about what size I'm using. This is a size one sharp brush, uh, Kalinsky Sable. So. Uh, for the highlights, though, what I'm going to do here is uh, just kind of follow the edge here and kind of do the same thing I was doing with the blue, with the, or with the dark brown. Uh, just kind of give it some random, random streaking. Same thing on the other hoof here. Get to where you guys can see it. This is the tricky part here is keeping it in the camera when I when I'm painting. So alright, see what we what we're doing there. And then for the final highlight on it. I'm just going to go a straight rucksack tan on this one. We'll see. Hopefully it's not too big of a jump. We'll find out here in a sec.
a little more moisture there so it's blending a little more just going to kind of get some on the tips here of the nails and the same with the nails up here on the fist Those hoods are looking more like hoods there, huh? I think what I'm going to do is uh, just add a little bit more, a little bit more of, uh, of a highlight into this. I'm not totally digging it yet. I think we'll go jump a little bit further. I'll use some Menoff Light Base. For you guys uh, listening, can you tell me how the audio sounds on your end? Is it is it uh, loud enough? Is it a little poppy? Is everything coming through okay? I'd be interested to know. I'd also be interested to know how the frame rate is doing streaming at the 1080. If someone can pop in on chat and let me know as well. All right. Now we're going to mix a little bit of the men off white base and with the rucksack tan just so it's not such a stark contrast and this is just going to be some really fine highlights same here this other side again just doing some light light streaking striping rather don't want anyone getting the idea that I'm promoting the idea of them running around naked. So, all right, there you go. Those hooves look great. We're going to leave it like that. I, I think that turned out pretty good right there. <laughs> who the hell is Bob Ross? Is he that, that guy with the afro who does the, the painting on the uh, public service uh, channel? <laughs> I hope that's not him. I really don't want to be equated with that guy, although he is a good painter. Uh, so I'm going to zoom back out now here, and um, you can see how the how the hooves look overall there. Pretty nice. And I think what I'm going to do now is move up here to the hand area, right into here, and uh, the wrap on the sword here, and work on that for a little bit. Um, I like to cheat sometimes um, when I paint. So what I'm going to put into here actually is a, is a wash. Let me show it to you guys here real quick. It's called uh, Army Painter Ink. I'm going to use what's called the Strong Tone. Okay, yeah, it's very similar to uh, to Devlin Mud, to the old GW Devlin Mud. Stuff works great. Um, I'll put that on. Then I'll start working on the hand. And that should, uh, by the time that's dry, I can go back and then highlight the straps that are on the sword there. So, let's take a look here. All right. So this stuff, I don't, I don't uh, worry about applying it too cleanly. Um, you know, I just slap it on and let it dry. And then I come back to it and clean it up later with the with some highlights and stuff like that. It actually is a pretty versatile medium when it comes to uh, to painting quickly, which uh, which is something that I enjoy doing. A good use of it here. I'll just kind of show real quick. If you look in the arm joint right here, there we go. Uh, that's a little bit of a better angle. Um, that arm joint right right in there. Um, it's a little flat kind of hard to tell but I'm going to add a little bit of this wash into that corner as well um, just to, to give it a little more depth a little bit on the inside there and that'll help that'll help give it some depth so that uh, some shadow too uh, as far as the flesh tone tones that I painted this guy with I'd have to remember exactly what it was, but I, I, I want to say it was um, Cador, uh, Idrian Flesh, Cador Flesh, Grin Flesh, and a little bit of uh, Battle Dress Green, I think. Um, and then these dark, darker purple 
uh, shadows were uh, sanguine, and then the, the highlights were uh, Menoth white highlight and uh, uh, red flesh, if I remember right. Um, I've got it written down somewhere, I just don't have it handy, Eric. So uh, I'll shoot you an email uh, here a little later uh, with what the exact re recipe was. I'm uh, just going to add a little bit of this wash too into the fur there on an, on the back of his uh, on his back, just to to pick that detail up a little bit more. Um, all right, so uh, I need that to dry a little more before we move on. Uh, I wanted to put a little bit of this just in the cracks of the fingers there, give that a little bit of depth, um, so that there's some illusion of of shadow there. You'll notice one thing with the wash. Um, you know, you see this on the internet a lot. Oh, just put a wash on it, you know, and uh, just apply it all over and let it let it dry, kind of thing. I don't like to use washes that way. I like to be very controlled with my washes, putting them in very specific spots. Um, a lot of people call that pin washing. Um, that's uh, a term that I um, and a skill actually that I picked up as I started painting model uh, tanks and airplanes. Uh, you do washes on that stuff um, and, and panel lines and things like that. So, all right, so he's coming along pretty good there. I think uh, next I want to finish up this belt across his chest and then also the hilt and the chain here. So I paid a couple things silver here. I think I'm going to use pig iron for that. That's what I based the rest of his armor in. You'll notice here, let me... Uh, Increase my focus here a little bit. Um, here we go. You can see the armor is kind of weathered and beat up. I, I wanted to go that route with it. I didn't want it to look super clean. So I'm going to start with a darker darker metal for those spots just so it matches. I'm bringing my camera back into focus here. There we go. So I'll be using, um, oh, what did I say, pig iron for that one. P3 pig iron right there. That rattling you hear is I, I put the agitators in my dropper bottles for my paints. I use six millimeter round lava beads that I buy off the internet. Um, the, the lava doesn't uh, corrode over time, right? <laughs> and uh, they're heavy enough to actually serve a purpose of mixing when you, uh, when you put them in there. So um, that's what I use for mixing my paints when I'm working on them there. Just gonna get this buckle here. Come over here to the chain, start working on that. So what else I'm planning on doing with these streaming videos too is um, not everything is going to be a, a paid service, you know, so to speak. I mean, I, I definitely want to take time to have, you know, hangout sessions and sessions where I'm streaming, working on my own individual stuff, private stuff, um, and just talking and hanging out, you know, talking about what I'm doing, talking about how I'm doing it, that sort of thing. Nothing, um, yeah, nothing too crazy. So. You know, I'll probably do those types of sessions, you know, maybe once a week, once every other week type thing. And I'll schedule those out well in advance. And on my YouTube page, you'd be able to see my schedule of when I'm going to be doing stuff. And uh, Not YouTube, I'm sorry, a, a Facebook page. You'll be able to see my schedule of when I'm going to be doing stuff and, you know, what's coming up sort of thing. And so that'll be a good way to... For people to you know kind of gauge their interest on what times they want to join in on Twitch and what times they don't. 
this video along with all my videos so far, uh, or not so far, but you know the ones that will be coming up, they're all going to go on YouTube when they're done. So you know people can always go back and watch them, check them out. Part of the painting tutorial service that I'm doing as well is you know offering that back on YouTube. I would like to get to the point though where those tutorial videos um, I'm burning onto a DVD like a Blu-ray and sending to the customer and then that way they have their own you know private copy of, of the material that was covered. But I have to get myself a Blu-ray burner before that can happen. So one step at a time, you know, baby steps, right? Get the hilt of the sword here. This is a great color, pig iron. I love it. It covers great. It's a great base for metallics. Uh, you can highlight it and build it up really easy. Um, you can even turn it into gold sometimes too if you um, if you've got a good uh, the right kind of color palette going. Um, it actually can serve as a good base for gold and give you a nice dark blighted gold type look. Um, that might be something to go over at some point too on one of these videos as well in the future. So yeah, it's got great coverage. It's great color all around. Something I'm really happy with. So let's uh, see. We got the chain there. We got the hilt. Now we got to work into here into this this tight area right in there. Looking back up at the chat too, it looks like I missed a question about the tattoos, how the tattoos on this guy were done. Funny story with those. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, you know, John's got a lot of personality. Uh, and I really like it. I've been on his show before. I really enjoyed my time on there. It was a great experience. And um, when he asked me to do Maximus, I hadn't done Maximus on commission before, so um, I didn't fully know what to expect. You know, I'd seen the pictures on the privateer site and and whatnot, but um, still, you know, what you see on the website versus what you get are always two different things. And so I, I get Maximus. And first thing I had to do, bless John's heart, was uh, strip strip Maximus down, uh, take him apart, and reassemble him. Um, there was a, John had gotten a little happy with the green stuff, and so uh, I had to fix a few things, which you know it's fine, no big deal, I don't care. And then. Um, I get them all together, I get them posed, I get all the joints cleaned up, everything looking good. And I'm looking at them, trying to figure out how I'm going to paint it. And, you know, I was pretty pretty set right from the start of, uh, you know, the pig pinky color flesh and then the, you know, the green cloth and the red the red armor, that sort of thing. Um, but I needed something to, to make it Menoth John, if that makes sense. I needed something to do to give it some personality. And uh, with all the exposed flesh on here, I was like, you know, some tattoos would be nice. What kind of tattoos do I need to do? And um, I, I, and I thought, well, I need to put, you know, PWMJ, Painting with Menoth John, on there. And uh, that's when it hit me. Uh, prison style tats, you know, on the stomach, gangster style, um, making that happen. And so that there, uh, the, 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 the wording there, PMJ, is just uh, freehand. It was, uh, I think the color was um, coal black mixed, mixed with a touch of uh, frostbite. And so that's what that is, is PWMJ. And then on the, the bicep right here, uh, it says Ron, which uh, anyone who's a painting with Manoth John fan, you'll know what that means. And then after I put them on, I took the P3 ink, flesh wash ink, and uh, just kind of lightly glazed the areas a few times just to make the um, make that blue tattoo color uh, bleed into the skin a little bit more and, and not stick out quite as much. Um, I, I'd actually like to do a lot more um, tattoo type work on miniatures. It's kind of something that, that interests me. Freehand is something that I've never been particularly good at. And so it's kind of an area that I think I could I could really have some fun in if I 
if I practiced and and uh, and got it going right. So uh, now I'm going to move on to the uh, still working with my metallic here. I'm going to clean up these uh, or not clean them up, but paint the uh, little rivets on the fit on the helmet there. One thing I'm always talking about to uh, to new painters, and and this example really shows that, is uh, brush control. The biggest thing that'll help you out as a painter is learning how to control your brush and keep your hands steady. And uh, doing that while you're talking, I'm discovering is quite a challenge, <laughs> but it's a good one. So I messed up a little bit on that one there. Nothing I can't fix though. Alright, so there's the the face mask there. We'll hum it. And then we've got uh, some more hair and hair back here. And then of course those two faces that we'll have to get to. Uh, looking at the, the strap too on the uh, sword here. I don't know if I'm actually gonna go back and touch that up anymore. I think that's gonna be alright, that, that'll be acceptable. See if this needs another, another coat as well. All right. Now for the tusks, I think what I'm going to do here is I've got a little bit of my um, mid-tone color that I used on the hooves left on my wet palette, which was about a 50-50 mix of the Umbral Umber and Rucksack Tan. I think what I'm going to do is just add some Menoth white base right into that mixture. That should give me a nice, oh, nice kind of creamy tan color, uh, almost like a Hammerfall khaki. You can see it on my brush there. All right, and uh, just going to paint these tusks. This will be the base color. I'm going to highlight with the Menoth white highlight, most likely. And shade with the 50 50 mix of uh, Rucksack Tan and Umbral Umber. You can already see how that's already giving a nice, nice bone color, which is exactly what that tusk should look like. One thing I've noticed with this camera is I've been doing some test streams is um, it doesn't pick up white very well. Picks up darker colors very well, but um, the, white seem, the whites seem to wash out a little bit too much, uh, which is unfortunate. But, um, but one that I, I don't think it's gonna be a, a deal breaker for things. I think it'll work out just fine in the end, so. Well, I'm talking about colors here for a second. Let that dry for a moment. One of the things I want to talk about real fast is with these uh, paint tutorial videos that I'm going to be doing, not only are you going to get the live demonstration that I'm showing right now, but you're also going to get the, the opportunity uh, to interact with me. And I know that sounds uh, a little narcissistic, but here's my here's my thinking behind it. When depending on the size of the model you're going with, depending on the complexity of the model, these tutorial videos are going to last anywhere between one to three hours. Okay. During that time, you you as a customer, you as a client, can join me on on Google Chat, say or Google Hangouts, and interact with with me live. I would be sending you the stream. That would be broad, broadcast on, on Twitch as well. Um, but you would be seeing it in real time, whereas Twitch viewers would be seeing it you know, with a 30 to 45 second delay. And during that interaction, you have the chance to ask me questions. You know, As you're seeing me paint something, as you're seeing me do a blend, as you see you're, you're seeing me apply a wash, you can stop and stop me and ask me questions on that right then and there's not a delay that you have to worry about. Um, in addition to those, you know, one to three hours that, that we would have together, 
Um, I'm also offering an additional two hours uh, through Google uh, audio chat um, for you to, to ask additional questions, follow-up questions. So it's, um, it's really a, a cool opportunity to have the chance to talk with an experienced painter while they're demonstrating how to paint the figures that you want to have painted for your army. So it's a completely different take on commission painting service. Instead of this idea of you sending me everything, I paint it and send it back to you, I'm trying to help people learn how to paint their armies. You send me one or two figures from the army, I demonstrate here on the video how it's done, and then I send it back to you. So in addition to the, the painted miniature that you would get back, you're also going to get one of these as well, which is, this is an example from Trevor's um, uh, trolls that I'm painting for him. Every, every um, um, commission I do, I, I make up one of these cards. Uh, if the client requests it, I send it back to him. If not, uh, I, I keep it as well. I keep it in my records. But it's the paints that were being used to achieve a specific part. So, for example, this is the paint card I use for Trevor's Trolls on his skin tones. Um, it, they're comprised of five colors, Umbel Umber, Coal Black, um, Iron Hole Gray, Underbelly Blue, and Crick's Highlight. And that, then this kind of line here is the um, progression of color, if you will. So from the darkest color up to the lightest color. And that's kind of the idea of how, how that shade is going to change as it goes from highlight base to shadow um, across their army. So you as a, as a client would get the, all of these for all the colors used. Um, you know, so leather, skin tones, armor color, hair color, base color, you know, whatever. It's just, it's a tool to give, to send back to you along with the miniature that, that I painted so that you know, you know, what the, those formulas were, what those colors being used. And as an example, here is the troll that I'm working on for Treble, Trevor. And you can see, oh man, that white balance really threw that off there. Um, so take a look at that. that. Those are the colors that I'm using. Take a look at the troll. Um, and you can see those colors actually implemented on the troll there and how they look. So, um, so everyone's going to get one of these paint cards sent back to them as well um, through that process. So um, just something for those that are interested in this, uh, how that's, uh, that that would be something that they're going to get. So back to um, Maximus here. We're going to add some shading to these tusks. What I'm going to do here is a bit of a glaze, kind of a quick and dirty glaze, if you will. I'm just mixing up a, a, a rucksack tan and umbral umber on my wet palette adding a little bit of water to it. I'm not going to bother with a glaze medium for some, something so small. And getting it to the consistency that I want. And then we're just going to pull, pull this color down into the base of the tusk right next to the mask. And that's going to be the start of, of the shadow and the glaze that's going to happen with these tusks. While that's drying for, for a minute, I'm going to take some straight umbral umber right off my palette. And I'm going to do a little bit of a black line right underneath this metal tip and the tusk. And what that's going to do is just create a, a visual partition of the two colors. And you can already see how how that makes those pop out a little bit more. Um, that's called black lining. You don't always have to do it with a black color. In fact, you can do it with a with a light color or a dark, slightly darker version of the base color. A lot of different things you can do there. I added just a touch more umbral umber to this little glaze that I'm adding at the base of the tusks here. And a little too, a little too crazy with that. I got to thin it out here. Same thing on this side. Just 
gonna put a little bit of this shading color here on the snout too, just to kind of pull out some of the detail there on it. Not too worried about messing up on the snout too much at this point, as it's still largely a work in progress, the face, and I'll be going back and cleaning up a lot of that when, uh, when I'm done with the final product. I think what I'm gonna do now is just mix up some straight umbral umber with a little bit of water, making a little bit of a glaze. And that's just going to be the, the darkest shadow that I go at the base here of the tusk. Okay. And I need to clean up a little bit of this metal tip on this side. Some of the brown got onto it a little too far. All right. And now for the straight highlight, I'm going to go back to Menoth White Base. That'll be my kind of my first highlight. And this I'm also going to kind of glaze on as well. Okay. White can be really tricky to work with sometimes. And if it's too, too heavy in your brush, you lose control. If it's too light in your brush, you don't. You don't get enough detail out of it so and I'm just gonna real real gently just kind of do like just like I did on the tusks just some some kind of random cross hatching and streaking not really worrying too much about placement of stuff or how clean it looks I mean they're tusks after all they're not going to be totally perfect right so that's kind of the first layer of them all right, and then I'm going to grab some straight uh, men off white highlight, and that's going to be the uh, kind of the final streaking that I'll do with it. Now, oh, man, look at Trevor crashing the party here with questions irrelevant to the to the cast. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going, Trevor. I'm, me and my family are driving down Friday night, so I'm actually uh, I'm good on my own. Um, I'm good on my own getting to the IMC. I don't need a ride down. I've, I've got that arranged. Uh, it's just the ride back to Lehigh that I'm going to need. Hope that answers your question. Thanks for interrupting. All right, guys. Back to, back to uh, Maximus's tusks here. So going with straight Menoth white highlight and looking at it, I think it is just a little too bright. So I'm just going to add a little bit of the uh, Menoth white base into it just to make that transition a, a little a little smoother. And uh, again, I'm just going to kind of cross hatch and streak just a little bit at the ends there because uh, tusks always have a, a graininess to them or, or a textured a textured look to them and that is about the extent that those tusks, tusks are gonna get there and looking at the camera here I'm not happy with the way those hands look so I'm gonna mix up a bit, little bit of Adrian flesh here real quick and just put it on the underside of these fingers so that they uh, they have a little bit of shad shadow to them. So what other questions do you guys have tonight? Uh, anything you're wanting to talk about specifically? Any uh, Anything you're wanting to know the secrets of, of or the mysteries of that, uh, <laughs> that are supposedly out there? Which I think is kind of ridiculous. I don't think painting miniatures is any great mystery to be honest. Nothing a little bit of practice and a little bit of time won't fix. I know there's those that, that would beg to differ, and that's fine. They can differ. All right. That looks better on those hands. A little bit of shadow there on those fingers.
Right. Well, we're hitting about the 45 minute mark here, guys, so I'm going to be wrapping up here pretty soon. I think what I'm going to do next here real quick is uh, on these silver eyelets here on the, the armor is uh, I'm going to be adding a drop of armor wash into them just to give them a little bit of definition. So we get that here real quick and put that on. Right now I only have one camera set up. Um, I do have two more cameras on order. Uh, the second camera is going to go on my airbrushing station so that when I'm doing airbrushing um, while I'm streaming people can uh, watch what I'm doing there. The third camera not exactly sure yet what I'm gonna do with it. Um, Trevor had the idea of uh, putting it so it was facing me so that uh, when I'm talking to people they can actually see my face. Uh, for those of you that have seen me in person I don't know if that's such a good idea. <laughs> um, another idea I was having was to uh, have my camera sitting over my palette so that people could see what uh, what kind of mixing I'm doing or you know how I'm how I work my, my wet palette um, that's an idea as well and um, one that I may do I believe twitch can can support several cameras at once um, so you know I, I can always get an additional cameras as uh, as demand may require so we'll just see how this kind of plays out you know right now it's um, very much a uh, trial period for me you know figuring out if this is going to work figuring out how to do it what I need to do what the details are that sort of thing so so what I'm using here is just the p3 ink armor wash um, and just dropping it in, in kind of the details here I'm also going to put some on the chain as well I have to keep reminding myself to look up every few seconds to make sure I'm still on the screen and the camera. I wish there was some kind of app or something to create a, a ding or a bell when I go out of viewing area. That would be a great way to know. <laughs> Alright, we'll add a little bit of a wash here to, uh, to our hilt. Backside here, and with this chain, I do want to be a little careful that I don't ruin the uh, the nice blue glowing effect that I got going underneath there. I don't want to to mess that up, so I'm just going to mostly focus on putting it right there in the recesses. Come back and highlight it here in a second. So that's what we got there. All right, uh, no idea how to pronounce your name, bud, but uh, Risky D1NGO, sorry. Um, you're asking, is there a big difference between exp expensive brushes versus moderately priced ones? You know, how do you define expensive versus moderately priced? That's going to be individual for everybody's, um, you know, budget. I will say this. Um, this is a, this is a Sharf Kalinske, okay, um, size number one. All right, uh, it's a very good brush. I've been very happy with it. Um, I've got some Raphael's, Kalinske's as well. This one here is a size two. Okay, um, I've got a size three hanging on my wall, and then some uh, uh, Windsor and Newton um, a series sevens as well. Um, the size three Raphael was the most expensive brush I purchased. It was about thirty dollars, I think. Um, these um, Sharfs, uh, I believe, were about $15, $16. Uh, 
I've had this one close to six months now. And a brush will typically last me a couple years. Um, and I think higher quality brushes, when you take care of them, you're going to get years of use out of them as opposed to just a few months. Now that being said, I also have a bunch of these sitting on my desk, which are um, synthetic brushes that I pick up at Walmart for five dollars a pack and there's you know eight or nine brushes in there. Uh, I like to use these when I'm doing um, fast work, um, base coating and stuff like that because I'm, I'm really hard on my brushes when I'm doing you know a whole unit of 10 for a commission and I, I move really fast and I use my my Kalinskis here um, for the blending and the fine detail work. So you know dropping you know 50 bucks on some brushes I think is an investment um, and I do notice the difference in them one of the biggest differences I notice in them is um, is is what I call the spring of the brush okay um, you know you uh, let me get it this way so you can kind of see you know you can see how when I bend that down it, it pops back that's a sign of a good brush and and something that I like because when you're drawing really fine lines for example the freehand for the tattoos there um, that spring in the brush gives you kind of a back pressure a little bit and for me it helps kind of gauge you know how much pressure I need to put down when I'm painting and that's um, to me that's important so so that's something for you to, to to think about when you're when you're looking at brushes so uh, Batman wants to know how to develop brush control Headband camera, yeah, that could be kind of cool. Brush cam, that could be kind of cool. <laughs> um, camera on the palette would be cool, yeah, yeah, that would. Um, gosh, how do you develop brush control? You know, that 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 might have to be its own session, or or something that I talk about why I paint. Um, there's um, when I when I teach um, um, individual classes, uh, I, I did one here a couple weeks ago with. Uh, a buddy of mine, Shane, down in, in Utah, and uh, <clears throat> one of the things he wanted to work on was um, using an airbrush and getting to use an airbrush. And so um, I taught him some specific um, exercises that he could do uh, to practice those airbrush skills with. And it's not that much different when it comes to, um, to, to painting miniatures either. Um, you know, there's specific things that you can do to practice that dress brush control. One big thing is breathing. A lot of the guys, I think, will hold their breath when they're doing uh, really fine detail work. I think you should do the opposite. I think you should be focusing on taking slow, deep breaths when you're doing uh, small detail work um, because your brain needs oxygen, and without it, you're not going to even be able to hold the brush. <laughs> So uh, focusing on your breathing, focusing on slow and steady and deep, um, I think just kind of calms the body down in general and, uh, and allows you to control that brush a, a, a little better. Uh, what I'm using here real quick is uh, Army Painter Soft Tone. It's a um, kind of a sepia based uh, color and I'm just putting it in here on these severed heads. Um, not as a final detail, but just as a way to to see where the detail is. It, it makes painting a little easier sometimes with these washes. Um, you can see the detail a little bit better on them. Add some here on this leather band around his ankle. Like so. Also on the leather belt up here under his waist. All right. Put a little bit also on this metal just to kind of give that a little bit more of a, of a weathered, weathered look as well. Uh, 
Again, I mentioned this earlier, but for those of you that um, came in late, um, when I apply my washes, I'm not just washing the whole area. I'm very specific with them and uh, how I place them and where I put them. So. All right. Well, he's getting pretty close to being done. I think I'm going to do a little more work on the hair here. Adding some highlights. There's a leather strap that I missed. And then um, his face and the base. And this guy's about done. So, And uh, we're just at about 9.30, which is uh, where I wanted to cut off at tonight. So I want to thank everyone for joining tonight. Looks like for my first night, uh, we had... Uh, 24 people viewing, which isn't too bad. It's pretty exciting. Pretty excited about that. Um, keep a lookout on my Facebook page on uh, Facebook, Facebook slash Red Modeling. I'm going to be putting a schedule there of when I'm going to be streaming. Also, make sure to subscribe to my Twitch channel here. When I hop online, you'll, you'll receive an email notification that, uh, um, that I'm on. So, Thanks again, guys. If you have any questions, feel free to email me, redmodeling at gmail.com. Happy to, to take your questions there. Also, if you're interested in having one of these paint tutorials done as well, make sure and let me know um, as well. You can reach me at the same email address and I can discuss the, the details with you further. I'll be doing a couple more of these sessions here in, a, in a, about a week or a few days and uh, working on some other stuff. But in the meantime, guys, Thanks a lot and have a good night. We'll see you guys next time. Take care.